So, uh, okay, we'll get started. So we talked about CNN and several architectures last time, like, like Google Net and WestNet. So today we'd like to talk about like visualizing CNN. So like uh, see how we can um, try to interpret like the, the activation inside the network. So um, let me just get into some uh, example. Oh, okay, maybe before that, like just think of like maybe we can just directly look at the activation of inside CNN because uh, if you think of the first couple layers, like, it's quite intuitive. Right? At least the first layer is just go for a convolution, right? You have the image. And then uh, for the entire image, you go for a convolution with that image. Then for different filters, you can look at different filters there. And um, more or less that uh, you can uh, you can see the filter result somehow. And um, and uh, it, for the first layer, it's kind of interpretable. Like it's something where you just have an image, you have a special kind of filter, you, you look for like, what's the result of that filter. Um, but beyond that, like, um, it's not quite uh, uh, interpretable. And this is a copy from, if you remember, like, uh, I show you that uh, uh, Andrew Kapafi, like, uh, he has a demo online. And I guess I, I don't have that, but so um, if you go to go back to early lectures, I mentioned that like you find the link. Oh, yeah, I can. I'm not sure I can find that, but it's okay. So that demo, you can uh, look at the ways for each of the layer. Right? So beyond the first layer, you you if you just look at the activation alone, you cannot see much from there. So, uh, so therefore, like, you need some other. Uh, Technique to trying to visualize the uh, new ledger itself. So, some of one of the earliest work is by Fergus and Sela, like back in 2013. So he has an idea. They have an idea. It's like, um, so many of this CNN is used for classification. Like I have an image coming in. I trying to. I Hi, uh, let's see. Hey, Tosa, are you guys going to say something? Like, oh, let's see. Uh, okay, I guess it's fine now. So, anyway, um, so the idea is basically since we're going to recognize something, right? So, for example, this image is trying to recognize a dog, a type of dog. Pomeranian, I don't know what kind of dog is that, but anyway. So, uh, what, what they think of is like, we, we want to see like, w w what patches inside the image is most uh, responsible for recognizing this dog. So then what they can do is they simply uh, just um, set some of part of the image into just uh, a blank or like set it to zero, for example, here, like, I just set this patch here to be sealed. I just move around and see like um, how it changed in terms of recognition. So, and if you do that, you can form some kind of like heat map like this. So it, it, uh, for example, like if I, I'm trying to recognize this Pomeranian here, if I have this patch move around, you can see that if my patch exactly on the face of this dog, then uh, I will have, okay, the, the uh, the blue color is selective, the red color is positive, something like that. So if you ha you can't block the patches here, around this region here, uh, the the confidence of classifying into this kind of dog will decrease. On the other hand, for example, for all the other parts actually you have increased. So it kind of, uh, th this kind of like, uh, uh, you, yeah, I, I, I don't know how to say it. But anyway, like, okay, I guess I need to build another mic. So are, are you guys have something to say? Otherwise, I'm going to build your mic. Um, okay, you already did. So, okay, and then like, um, oh, if you have something to say, just unmute it. So, uh, 
And you can look at this other example, like for this image, it's trying to recognize the car view, right? And then you can see, like, for all the words, like, uh, if I block exactly the view, of course, like, the score will decrease. So the classification score will decrease. And for this one, this image is more complicated with, with a guy and with a dog here and with a lady here. So, like, when you kind of, like, block some of these places, so, of course, you, if you block the dog, the recognition score, the classification score for the dog will decrease. And it's interesting also, like in this case, if you block the guy here, the score will increase because hey, this is probably the part will confuse the classifier, whether you want to you want to classify a dog or like, you want to classify a, a person. And this is um, one, one of the earliest work. So... And a similar idea uh, to do visualization can be just think of like we input like many, many images into the network and we'll just group the images in terms of the uh, classification results. For example, like we look at like uh, all the images that classify into a person, let's say this is like probably uh, the get classified into a person. I, I guess this point nine or something is probably the score or something. And then they, they do simple similar, uh, basically like you just put many, many images and see like um, what images were classified to what. And um, very simple idea. I, I'm not sure when was this work here. And then afterward like uh, something immediate, I guess, people will think of it like we have this um, kind of categorize like, each of these images, like these input images into different classification result. And it, it would be interesting if we can kind of like cluster all these images into uh, uh, a big image like this. Basically this is a, it's hard to see this is composed of lots of tiny images, basically like image that have a close in terms of the classification type are put together, kind of. Um, and uh, this is uh, generated by this so-called like uh, Tisley uh, customization. So of course you can think of like, okay, maybe I can do PCA as well. So, um, Think of you have the little network, like, like any network, let's say I have an Alex lab, that uh, I do all the classification all the way, and just be, before I do the final classification, final, final fully connected layer, uh, this layer, okay, this FC7, have about like 4,000 so many uh, parameters here. I, I can just take all these coefficients as a feature, right? So I can take this as like, some kind of code for an image. Now, I, I, it depends on like uh, what code I have. Maybe I can uh, I can decide like what type of image it, it has. So then I can pass. Okay, of course, like this should abstract lots of information because just from here, I'm able to classify into different types of image, right? Different classes, right? But in terms of visualization, like this. So because if I want to visualize in two dimension, I only have 2D, right? 2D for me to represent the images. So I, I, I like to very efficiently use this space, basically. So, um, and uh, that would be a dimension reduction problem. So we have like, if you just, okay, as I mentioned, like one way to do that would be just PCA, you have like from, 4,000 something like around 4,000 dimension, then you drop it to 2D. And then like uh, up to like, basically like you, you have a 2D sp for each of the image that have the corresponding like 4,000 dimension codes that will map into this 2D points here somewhere. So then I can put the image at that points there. Is that clear here? So I, I need some kind of dimension reduction. 
as I said, like classically, I can do PCA, but uh, here, like uh, I like to talk about this T sleeve. This is the um, basically in terms of visualization, like this. This probably the state of the art for doing that. Um, so T sleeve. Um, uh, before we're talking about T sleeve, probably I should talk about sleeve. Sleeve is like. Uh, it stands for like stochastic neighborhood embedding. And the idea is like pretty straightforward. So you think of um you think of pawns in this high high dimensional space. So I have this is 2D space, but I have like pawns in the high dimensional space somehow. So for pawns in the high dimensional space, I'm going to model this high dimensional space pawn in terms of um uh, Kind of Gaussian distribution, and here also also in terms of Gaussian distribution, and um, I want the distribution such that like if pawns are kind of like close to each other in this high dimensional space, they are kind of close to each other in this low dimensional space as well. Kind of this kind of idea. So um, is that clear? So then like in more detail, like what I can do is I like, I will just for all the points there, like in this high dimensional space, uh, I will kind of like uh, represent using a uh, kind of conditional, actually I put here is a conditional probability, but but later on actually, I, I will make it a symmetric like um, joint probability as just uh, if I have like uh, kind of like image i and image j, then the joint probability will just the average of the conditional probability pi given j and pj given i. And uh, and for each of the conditional probability, as I said, like, I will make it like a Gaussian-like. So I will say I will have this is basically the 4,000 4, length code here. And uh, the, the, the probability will be kind of proportional to the kind of the distance between this um, x and y in the high dimensional space, but later on subject to a Gaussian kernel, this is a Gaussian kernel. Eh? So um, here is just a normalization factor, and very special about that. So also like for Q will be like in the 2D space, I will do the same thing. So, but in the high dimensional space, I have a, a one variance for a different, different basically data point there kind of like, but, uh, but in the 2D space, I, I will assume all the variants are the same, so I don't have sigma here anymore. So then I want these two distribution to look similar to each other. If you remember, we talk about KL divergence, right? So we just use KL divergence to, um, as a distant measure of these two distribution. So then we want to force the KL divergence between like, P and Q to be small. So I I have for each of the pair, I'll just sum over all the, because, uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah. Then, then I, I will just uh, minimize this scale divergence, right? Um, so uh, just a tiny remark here, uh, because KL divergence is not symmetric, actually uh, this has some uh, kind of like, uh, um, kind of like uh, some, some caveat here. So I, as I said, like the original idea probably is that I want the distance between in the high dimensional space with when it's small, then like in the low dimensional 2D space would be small as well. But if you look at this expression here, I actually, when uh, Pij is big, I will care about like what Qij is. When Pij is big, then I want Pij close to be Qij, right? So Pij is big, meaning that when in the original high dimensional space, like the two points there is close to each other. But on the other hand, when um, when PIJ is small, I actually this this score here doesn't actually um I don't care that much with PIJ and whether QIJ is close to PIJ 
or not right. So uh, that means that if I have the two points in the high dimensional space are far apart, then actually I, I don't, in this case, actually I don't really care like if like QIJ match with like PIJ or not. So if you look at this thing here, like for PIJ and QIJ, this is pretty much like a soft max, right? And KL divergence, remember KL divergence is kind of really the same as cross entropy. If you remember like soft mass across, uh, basically, soft mass followed by cross entropy, if you consider that as like a cross entropy loss, when you minimize that the local, actually we did that before when we talk about bad pop, then the local gradient will be simply the difference between the soft mass output. So I mean that like if I have, um, Um, yeah, so this is uh, just the soft mass output, like what I want to say. So I, I can think of like, uh, yeah, this this is input to a soft max, right? So essentially this thing is just a soft max, right? So I input this thing into a soft max, this is a soft max here. And then afterward, I, I'm trying to force these two guys to be the same to be the same using the carrier divergence, right? The carrier divergence essentially is like the same as cross entropy loss. And if you remember, like uh if I take the gradient of this loss uh with respect to to the to the input here to the soft max, maybe I call this input, uh, input y here, to the y here, this one is actually equal to the soft mass output, maybe I just call it O here, or I actually call it P here, will be um, equal to the soft mass output my, minus the visual difference of the soft mass output with the um, the ground truth there in this case, the, the, in this case, the ground truth simply Q. So, and therefore, I have this thing here. This is actually essentially that, that just the uh, just the uh, local gradient there. And then I have local gradient multiplied by uh, because it's parcel C parcel Y I. Then I have parcel C parcel. Uh, I in this case it is C here, actually. I have parcel C, parcel Y will be equal to gradient Y, C, and then parcel, uh, uh, parcel C. Yeah, actually, I shouldn't say call this Y. Uh, this is actually this here, maybe I call it O or whatever. Uh, it would be parcel O, parcel Y, something. And O is just this, the norm of the uh, here, or like this one here. And if you take this one, you just have two Y, I, y minus Y, J coming out. So uh, I, I well, yeah, anyway, like maybe I, I, I uh, he, here, uh, because, okay, I just want to, um, I mean, uh, Go through it quickly without taking uh, trying to compute the derivative. But uh, one one man like we did this derivative before. If you you know this is just a soft max, and uh, we are d just dealing with this cross entropy loss or like carrier divergence. Then actually we, we immediately we will have this gradient is equal to this guy here, and and, and then it's uh, to in this case we're trying to. Um, Tune this location of this y way right, such that um, this cost to be as small as possible. So then we'll be just do a steepest descent again. So you can just go for st steepest descent update for the y. Then basically you start with some points of y randomly put in some points there, and then you compute p and compute q, and then uh, you have compute this parcel c parcel y, and then you move this y 
so that you but this is of course just Lee but this Lee is like basically the same idea just um Lee have a problem is that like uh it has a so-called crowding problem so because if you look at the distribution for both of this guy here uh he, he is kind of a Gaussian like distribution also right? a Gaussian distribution have a have a uh, very uh, light tail what we want to say is like uh, you you have if you get far away from the mean here the probability very quickly go to zero eh? so therefore in the in the sense that like we are not very tolerating to uh, when when p is more uh, sorry when p is big that is basically in high dimension when these two points here are close to each other then we are forcing Q to be like has to be must be very close to each other as well but of course if you go from like high dimensional space to a just 2D space you don't have lots of places for you to move around right? so basically like you if you have in a high dimensional space you can have many points close to each other like, kind of like in the label of each other but when you go down to the 2D space points are close to each other um, we, we want them to still in cluster something like but we don't want them like just like squeeze into like just one point or something like that so what we can do is like for this distribution used to be Gaussian we just like loosen it a little bit to have a heavy tail distribution is that so we allow this Q now uh, even though it gets farther away then it's still kind of okay so th th does it make sense so then that's how we got the name T uh, Lee. T just because like, we are going to use the student T distribution instead of using the uh, the normal distribution, Gaussian distribution. So if we just we do the same thing and try to go through the math, basically the update will change to something like this. So it is similar. It, you can think of like this is some kind of force. Like, uh, and when you have a some uh, again, like if when you have like some pawns out there, like y i, that's in this we have some pawns out there. So you compute like uh, for for each pawn here, I'll compute like for each other pawns like y j and y i, and this will contribute to some force like from j to i something like this. This will be the force, and then like uh, yeah. And then we'll just move them around basically. And um, there's some small um, improvement of this Tisley implementation. The first thing is like, uh, since like you have like when you have many many pawns, like for example you have like a million images, that means that you have a million pawns, right? So the update will be quite uh, com quite uh, expensive. So for each pawns here we look for all like a million pawns and try to pull them along so what we can do is like we can group some of them together for example if I have a bunch of pawns like here and this pawn we can first compute the center of mass for that pawn and then just compute a left force to pull this guy here so uh, this actually known as the bounce hard approximation is actually originally from astrophysics and then like uh, some other updates is some other improvement is that you can organize this data structure in quadri or something like that uh, quadri data structure you can just go for Wikipedia to look for that so this just like give you kind of um, quicker um, um, what should I say uh, um, can quickly uh, recognize if a pawn is close to each other or not once you kind of like arrange your data and like move your data structure in the quad tree you can quickly check if a pawn is close or not close to each other and this can improve your update uh, speed as well uh, by the way you you might be interested to check out this thing here i'm not sure if i can let's see how to use this effectively I'm not sure anyone like uh kind of like came across this this kind of journal before like this called the steel journal it's kind of quite new 
uh, paper submitted there is uh, all like kind of, uh, interactive. So you, you can play around with that. So this is, uh, I, I didn't really look at this too much, but it, it looks pretty fancy. So, it's, so it give you the TC update, right? So like if I, I change to the stretch, oh, okay, continue to move around, okay. So that's you, um, I think it has a different cluster here. So you can, I, I guess I can change the number of pawns. Mm. Oh, this, some of this, I don't know what is that anymore. So perspective, I, I forgot what is that. So anyway, so but uh, yeah, if yeah, if you're interested, you can just go there and take a look. Um, that's for Teasley. So uh, now let's look at another approach. So uh, this is some kind of approach known as this decom idea. So what it's trying to do is like um, in SLI or like whatever that set or other technique we just mentioned, we just put in many, many images and see like uh, what, what, which image are, are supposed to be in the same cluster or something. But here it's like, um, I, I guess it's more more uh, 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 can be more fine tuned. So we will basically look at like each of the new ones to see like what they are correspond to. For example, if like we 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 want to see like if we have an image or like some kind of pattern, like what kind of pattern will kind of will likely to activate which new one. So this I can go to a very fine detail to visualize the network. So this is like, for example, some of the result here, like I can, in some of the point, they probably say this is like the cat class or something like that. I, I Basically what it is, I appear on some uh, image and then I just trying to see, okay, for what what part of that image actually activate that particular ones there. So, but we will see like what, how this that actually work. Um, this actually, uh, the first approach right, uh, also appear in the focus paper we just mentioned earlier. So in that one, like, uh, they not only talk about this occlusion experiment, they also talk about this uh, bad pop idea. So the idea is like, pretty simple. So basically you have an image coming in. Now you go forward to activate some of the new ones. Now you're going to just set all the other new ones to to deactivate that. So set them to zero. I'm only leave one new ones kind of like on, and then try to back pop that uh, signal back to the original uh, image image space there. Then you can see like what what's that response actually coming from. So that's basically the rough idea there. Uh, so of course, like, what, what we can do is like, we can simply do a bad part way right, in the sense, but it turns out the result is not so good. So in the earliest paper, what they did is like, um, they almost say like, a bad part. So for some like for, for um, of course, like, when we talk, when we think of a CNN there, especially like Alex Lash, so on, you mainly compose of several components, right? You have a filter, Filter is just a, a, a com filter that was just essentially multiplied by a matrix. And uh, I can have like a polling that, for example, mass polling, that for like some values coming in, I will just take the maximum of that. Maybe I just put some number here. So I get, get three here, I say, at the output. So, and, and uh, I also have activation, most of the time I will use Valut. So I have some, some coming, going through a Valut, and then going out. So, and each of that, I need to find the corresponding reverse operation. So if I have something going backward, like what should I do? 
So for filter, it's like pretty straightforward. I simply like if you think of like I I have some input x that I'm going to multiply by w to get the output y there. When I have y coming back, what I'm going to do is simply multiply w transpose to get back uh, uh, kind of like x. So when I go this direction, I, I have this. When I go back to the opposite direction, I will do this. So that that, that seems like very obvious and reasonable. Uh, for polling, so if polling, like, um, if you think of bad pop, uh, I, what do you think I should do polling, like for this guy here? If I have these four values coming in, when I, when I have something coming back, let's say it's one. What should I do for this? So what was that? Oh, what do you think? So should I do this? Like one, 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 one. is written here but so uh this doesn't work well so what, what we can do what we should do is that we simply like just only the one that actually uh, uh activates that this polling operation should should uh, should get feedback to um so for the rest, I, uh, you, you can think of it this way. So if you think of this as like uh, uh, some kind of, uh, this is some kind of switch here. If I have this like 3111 here, if I make changes for these guys here, I, I won't affect the values here, right? For example, if I have tiny changes, maybe I here, this other value as I change to 1.1 here, this value won't be affected. So if you think of like what I'm passing back is like a gradient information. Only when I change this guy, right, this will be like modified. So therefore, like when I pass back, like this guy won't shouldn't get any. At least in a small range of very, uh, of small range of changes here. So. Changing this guy won't affect the output, so therefore, like it's it's it's, it's kind of like these guys are insensitive to the output here, uh, and, and doesn't contribute to the actual kind of gradient there. Um, so that, does it make sense? So um, so that's that's anyway that that's what they did, At, and. Uh, and you can see it's actually quite quite good. Like, oh, okay, I forgot about value. For value, like they they did something is quite real. I can say like they simply do. If you have like value, this 
this size of value, then when you go in back, you, you still have value. So, uh, and, uh, um, did, uh, I, I will go go into that later, I guess I immediately, but uh, I, I don't think like this this kind of like stuff have very good justification somehow. Uh, but um, there's some other variation I, I'll talk about like just immediately. So, but as I said, like this is the result they have, like you can look at different layers, say like if I just try to see if I going to add to a particular new ones in a particular layer, I will got this kind of patterns here. And uh, similarly, I've go to a higher layer. Uh, and this is quite interesting, right? In higher layers, you can see like I can, uh, particular new ones, it's hard to see like that, probably this one get uh, something like a view and, and uh, let's see if I have more. Oh, and, and this is a layer four, something like. So what, what, what's even more interesting? You see, like one of the little ones definitely correspond to a dark face. So if I I look at what is activating to that guy, like okay, of course it's very hard for you guys to see. So you can see like here only the dark face is showing, and then for the west here the body is not there. So it's like the body doesn't kind of like activate to that face there. Um. And as I mentioned, like, there's some following work for that, like some other variation. Um, the one I mentioned is this one, this Deconf, like this 2013 paper there. And actually, if you think of that, like for Valut, the right way to that to do that, uh, if you're really bad propagating the gradient, Okay, but well, by the way, if I really bad propagating the gradient, I assume that this is the, <laughs> okay, I shouldn't, uh, maybe, maybe I should just, do I have, um, oh, okay, maybe I, I would just, uh, So let's say if I have a loop here, uh, some value like one minus one, three, two, one, minus one, minus one, minus one, three. And of course, I, if I, this is say a well, a well loop layer, then uh, after the well loop layer, I have like one, two, three, three, one here, something like that, right? Now let's say if I back pop back the gradient information, let's say you say I have something like one minus one my minus one minus two, maybe minus one, one two, one two, let's say. So what 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 should I pass back here? This is the gradient, go through the value. I mean, this is bad pop, normal bad pop. Yes, but uh, that's okay. This has negatives here and also that's here, negatives here. You we find negatives on here, negatives on he in here. Okay, both be, both be negative. So when both are negative, or like one of them are negative, or like either or, like both, or like this, or this one or this one, like the upper one or the lower one. So 
So if I am doing a normal bad pop, let's just think of bad pop. What what what's that like? Um, I uh, when when we do bad pop, remember remember that like uh, um, essentially what's passing back the gradient information is the load equal to the what's passing back here the gradient here multiplied by the local derivative of this function right local derivative of the input um, of the output given the input right the if i look at the local derivative for the value operation here um it can be either one or zero right so when the input is say positive then the derivative here is just one right and when a derivative Okay, when the input is in, in this region, the, de the derivative will be just equal to zero. Right? So, um, theoretically speaking, like the right way to do to pass back, uh, or like the conventional way, or like for to back pop over value layer, should be like I'm only passing uh, back gradient. For the input here is positive, so therefore, like I, I should have something like this: one, two, minus one, one minus one, right? And then I got zero here. Does it make sense? So this this is a bad pop, the white bad pop, called white bad pop, or like I can cannot call bad pop. Maybe I call it. Hmm. So does it make sense? So because I, I, I really the local gradient is is that way. Either way when it's basically the local gradient will be if here is x, here's y here, then the gradient something like uh uh x bigger than zero. Maybe I have an indicator function, something like that, way. Right? I don't know whether you make it clear or not even uh Let's key. Uh, how do I move this thing around? Ah, okay, this this is so weird. Oh, okay. Hmm. Uh, this is ah okay. Ah, okay, okay. Ah. Okay. So um. Right. Uh, um. But uh. But what Ferguson did, like uh, or like Ferguson did, like in twenty thirteen, is I basically um. They're doing back is also use a while loop, right? If they also use a while loop, then what you're passing back is something like uh, 1, 2, minus 1, minus 1, 1, 2, one, minus 1, minus 2. I will pass back 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, something like this. That's what they did there. And then there's a later on there's another result they call it like guided back pop, basically kind of combine these two together. So this time it's like only when, um, basically they only pass back the positive gradient, and only pass back when the input to the value is positive. So it means that it will pass back like. Uh, okay, maybe I should just go. I shouldn't go down that much. to do that so hmm. I want to keep that hmm. let me move it here first so what I mean is that like it be something like uh, have this guy uh, 
will only run um, so only run like these are basically the positive uh, input the positive I'm going to pass back the gradient but at the same time I won't pass back the negative gradient therefore like I will have this set to zero or something like that and they they call it guided by pop uh, and also like uh, visually you say tough good as well this is like the guided by pop and uh, and I guess like the the reasons for always is doing well for not passing back the uh, negative gradient is that like if you think of that, um, what the negative gradient mean uh, in is that in terms of response like you have some new one, a particular new one, uh, if ultimately somewhere there will contribute to a negative gradient, so it means that like. If I increase that guy, I'm going to diminish that response somehow. Eh? I will have a positive gravity in that. I, I, if I, I increase that, I'm going to increase the response. So if you mix these two together, then uh, you are going to have a messy image, right? So what, what we want is that we only want um, the part, the, the, the region or the pixels there, they're going to make that little one, say, getting more positive somehow but we are not interested to new ones that will kind of like also affect the outcome of that particular new one but actually like affect that in a negative manner so does it make sense like kind of so uh, but anyway like that that's how they did that um, in in either case uh, you, you, you can basically uh, using this you can pop into like different then you can basically pop into different new ones you can see like where they activate where they not activate and so on so there's some application for this thing for example like we can use this to find a salient map like for example you have an object say I, I, I'm I going to let's say here um, I, I want to kind of find this block here and then I can just find the pixels that will kind of uh, co activate the, the the new ones that classify this block here so then I um, then I can like just get a heat map something like that where I can get a map and then like this salient map can help me to kind of roughly uh, find the location of that Back there, and then afterward, I can do a further refinement using class segmentation method. So this is an example I like, call grab car just to uh, do a good segmentation using this idea. Uh, and uh, and uh, okay, this is basically oh okay, I can skip that. This is just a demo if you want to get into that. So it's like uh, um, I'm actually I think I think this is. Um, they they have an entire package for you to do this kind of this kind of visualization on CNN. So now let's look at another uh, another idea. Like so, previously we were looking at like trying to pop into like individual neurons. Now this is looking at another type of visualization. Say if we have kind of image coming in and then like we trying to do classification and so on and so forth until the second last layer as we mentioned this kind of like a code for that image and we want to see like whether we can use this code to recover the, the original image so how, how we can do that is like we will just use some optimization approach so we will think of like okay let's think of like any excess and Im image so I have exercised some arbitrary image so I would just want to see if I can find X such that it will map into that particular layer such that this layer find X up there is close to my desired original find zero there. And then I, if I don't put in any vocalization, most likely I'll get some kind of garbage noise because you know like most of this high dimension or like 2D object here say it won't end up into images most of them will be just purely noise so we need to add in some localization and then um, 
if we do that, like this is uh, a result that is done uh, in 2014. So you have the original image like that, and then you create that code there, right? And then you try to optimize. And here I have multiple images because like, the optimization here like is is not linear as well. So you you have you don't have a convex optimization, and uh, so therefore like you you don't have a unique solution. It's like kind of stochastic. Every time you start, you get ended up uh, a slightly different image. Um, and uh, there's more result here, and. Uh, and of course, I, here, like I take the last second last layer as the features. I can move up, right? I can take any particular layer and can kind of consider that as a feature, right? So if I move up, like, do you see what I mean? Like, for example, like here, I take this as my feature, but I can also take this entire block as my feature, right? And I try to force the image to match this entire block here. So as I move up, so let's say I move up to here, um, do you think this image I generate will be more similar to the original image than if I take the, kind of force my image to get close to this guy here? So I'm not sure I asked the question like clearly. So do, do you see my question here? So I, I, can, I can generate images put in constraint, saying that like I want my image to have coefficients at this layer matches all the coefficients of my original image, or I can uh, force my image to have coefficients that match original coefficients at this layer. So this one will be similar, more similar to, this, to the original image, or this one will be more similar to the original image. Do you think? Here? Yeah, no. Well, okay, okay, good, good, good. Yes, yes, yes. Right? Uh, I, I, I think it's, it's kind of uh, intuitive to you guys. Do, do you feel this kind of... So as you have more... Uh, I don't know. But why do you think so? Maybe you explain better than I do. The farther you go through, the more filtering and more deconstructive it's going to get from the original. Yeah, yes, yes. So the harder it is going to be to reconstruct it. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So and, and you can observe that like this one, like if I kind of like this is like showing like I keep like different layers here. I think like I don't know this is like uh, if you you just get forced into next layer, then you get pretty close to the original. But if you get farther and farther away, then um, it's farther from the original. Um, Um, earlier we, we say okay we have that code and we force uh, and we compute the code of a particular image and want the image want to find another image to have same code of this image uh, but now we can change the problem a little bit also say we have um, any arbitrary image or like say we, we just want to find any other uh, arbitrary image, but we want to force that image to fall into a particular class. So in the sense that uh, we want to, let's say, this is an uh, image that with thousand classes. So I just want to say generate image to have a particular class. So in the sense that the code then will be like OCO, but then there's a one here somewhere, something like. Um, and. Uh, so of course we can do the same thing. So essentially, we, we just like have a score that just uh, trying to maximize mass for for input image. We're trying to maximize the score of that image, uh, and also like we can add some regularization. Just want to make sure that uh, input say looks like an image. Uh, then. Uh, So we, we, yeah, basically we can do the same thing like uh, just as usual, like consider this is a cost function and then we try to compute um, the gradient and then like do a bad pop and then just 
uh, update the image there. And uh, this is the earliest, I think it's probably the earliest work to attempt this. And uh, they just, okay, start with some random image and s four different classes. I say this, this is a lemon, this is cup, and so on. Um, that doesn't look too good. But actually, if you, uh, there's some later work just a year later on that uh, people try to uh, improve that by just say uh, give a better regularization here. So, um, so, um, anyway, like there's some they, they when they do a better regularization, you get a kind of slightly better outcome like this one. And uh, and later on, like I guess this is a a year later on. Another work try to further improve on this one is uh, the idea is like um, if you think of uh, I force into a particular class uh, many objects that uh, kind of look different. I mean, but these are semantically is the same. So, for example, if I here, I am trying to classify something into a grocery store, and all this scene here, all these pictures here, can be reversed grocery store, uh, grocery stores, but they are pretty different, right, to look at. Um, and, and so, what they what they did there is they trying to identify a particular class there, and just basically use TSD as we mentioned at the beginning and trying to uh, cluster, cluster um, different pictures. Okay, they, they have a bunch of input pictures basically and then for this bunch of input pictures they um, can form, um, use TSD, map into a 2D space or lower dimensional space to form like cluster of images. So those like, even though they're same class, they can be clustered into different uh, different clusters, right? And then I, they will basically, when you do this optimization, you start, um, originally you start with a random image here, but what they did is like, instead of starting a random image, they will start with the centroid of a particular cluster for that class. And then they will generate image like, like more piecing like this one here. So uh, this is the same work here, basically like, uh, and um, later on there's another work here. So it's, it gets in result very similar visual, visually like uh, GANs, as we'll talk about that later on. It's like, uh, but this one does not actually use GANs, but they, P train. I, I don't know where where they get that this generator letter. I don't think they train it, but they they uh, from some some other work they got a uh, generator letters that will generate uh, kind of um, image let like images. So, but uh, you this image like uh, image. I think in that original model they didn't specify the code. Basically, you give him some input here, and then do do this will kind of like generate some image that is look like some image in image lab. So what they did is say, okay, I will cascade this uh, generative lateral here and with like, uh, kind of like, uh, what's that? Oh, with a classifier here. So with the classifier, basically it will classify like this image coming in, right? So then what they did is say, uh, they will just uh, try to train Uh, the image end to end. So, in the sense that you will give the input image here, then uh, you will a sec. Uh, yes, 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 I think so. Yeah, you, you give them this image, input image, then can forward a computer class way, and then the class. Um, Uh, how do they train that? Like, like, let me let me think.
Let's see if I give an image, I know what it is, okay? So I have input image, then we'll do a classifier. Oh, what do you guys think? Actually, by this time, I think you guys can think also. Right? Can 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 count like you, you know everything here. So now, like let's see. Uh. Mm, you should you should have in, enough. Uh, So you, you you see the problem set up right? What what they want is like they want to, um, they they have this is like a letter that that they got it from someone else, that is basically will generate an image given an input code here, um. But um, so basically you change any kind of code, you know what kind of image is coming in, um. So the goal will, yeah, the goal is clear here. And then, um, okay, then, then what I want is I, if I have input here, so basically like if I have a thousand classes here, so if I, I Given like an input, I should generate a code somehow. Yeah, actually, this figure is not very clear here. It didn't. Uh, so I should have like another letter trying to generate this code. So, uh, from for input here, I should have a letter trying to generate this code here. And then, like uh, I can train. I can train the network there, right? So, okay, anyway, I, I think like I only have five minutes left, maybe we'll just, uh, you, you guys have, I, I think I will take a look here at the paper again, and then we'll come back to